Well, the story originated with, um, I was first approached by the producer, Celine Rattray. Um, did I want to do a movie version of Black Nativity? So the story originated with the play Black Nativity, mm -hmm. but then in rereading it and realizing, um, you know, it really needed a bigger story in which to fit, I came up with this family drama. I wanted to write about uh, our times. I wanted to write something that was that was very, very timely and um, and very real, and yet had a timeless quality. Um, and so I, I wrote this family drama that Black Nativity kind of fits into. That's a story, a little bit of estrangement and um, hardship and um, different generations uh, of, of a family and um, different socioeconomic um, uh, kind of climate within uh, one family, you know. Mm -hmm. I think there are, there are many things on it as it relates to uh, forgiveness, the tough work of holding your family together, mm -hmm. how diverse the family is, and, and often how holidays uh, exacerbate the reality mm -hmm. of families, you know, mm -hmm. the complexity of, of trying to be this picture-perfect family for the holidays. There's a lot of stress for people. And I think the film gives you permission to, to, to really grapple with that and to communicate over silence. Yeah, these are real people. They're not, um, it's not like a little manufactured perfect family. It, it, it feels like a real family, and that's the way I wanted it to feel. Um, because we do always have to try and work on ourselves. We're a work in process and um, a fluid conversation with yourselves in terms of um, forgiveness and um, even in terms of faith. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, I certainly hope they come to see it. I think that, that uh, there's something for everyone in the movie. Mm -hmm. And um, I think sometimes, you know, we're really wrestling with questions, which is the right path to take. Um, you know, speaking to youth at a, that at a potential crossroads, like um, our lead character is, where he really could have gone in a lot of different directions, you know, um, and, and he kind of finds his way through the film. So uh, hopefully it'll be very important to young people in terms of, you know, just finding your way and making the right decisions. The thing I like about the film is that it is so multi-generational. Not only does it speak to young people, but it speaks to young people along the lines of where do I fit in the family? Mm -hmm. And to me, that is the issue that the coming generation really uh, grapples with. Not just who am I, but where do I fit in the family? Is there a place for me at this table? Mm -hmm. And I think the film is bodacious to take on such a courageous subject. And I think that young people will be inspired to find out that they are included in the process. Um, it, it was it's a very personal film for me, first of all, uh, on a lot of different levels. Uh, what was going on in my life and the, thing, the questions that I was wrestling with. So uh, in some ways, I got to be many different characters in this film. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely, there's a part of me that's Langston and Naima and Aretha and even the Reverend. <laughs> and, um, so to me, it really, I was talking about my world and processing what was going on in my life and what was going on around me. Really, I mean, uh, I wrote it in 2008, it was the height of the financial crisis, and um, I was writing about that as well. Mm -hmm. In terms of the nativity story, uh, I really had these, these this characters in mind, these two young kind of, um, these very poor young kids mm -hmm. um, that I wanted to, to present and, and reflect. They come in pretty early in the story, and uh, they end up being part of the nativity story. Very important to me. For me, I think uh, it was almost like preaching to the choir. <laughs> I, I don't think that I am as stoic or as rigid as, as the Reverend in the movie, but I certainly can relate to the perplexities between the values that you hold dear and, and, and the people that you hold dear, and how do you blend those things together so that you don't come home being the Reverend and, and not not remember to switch hats and be daddy. And uh, having raised five children and now grandchildren, uh, I have been there and done that and, and found out that people who communicate in front of crowds often find it difficult to communicate one-on-one, -on -one, the irony of it all. And so personally, it resonated with me in a way that was quite pro profound. If I can be a little philosophical, I've got to say that it was important to me um, 
you know, we're all children of God, and, and that's something that I wanted to get across. Um, just, I think that uh, in, in, in this case, this young man, this character, has kind of lost track of that, and he realizes that he is, he has the potential within him to create a miracle mm -hmm. in his family, you know? He has the potential in him to, and it really is a matter of just opening your eyes to the possibility um, that that you're you're powerful in that situation. And so we watch him kind of struggling with with power and how he fits in in the whole movie. You know, how can I how can I fix this and how can I help this situation? And then finally, kind of arriving at um, realizing how powerful he is. And what's really cool about that is that he is the least likely character to be the family fixer. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that's what I really liked about it. You would have thought that it would have come from some staged, staged uh, person of wisdom mm -hmm. and saged ideologies. And here comes the, you know, it, it, he's sagging and he's kind of, you know, yo, what's up? But, mm -hmm. but he comes across in such a way that he actually becomes the heroine and not the villain. Mm -hmm. Langston Hughes means a lot to me. Um, he means a lot to me as an artist, but also as an American figure, as an American poet that was incredibly prolific and famous in his own lifetime, mm -hmm. and um, who so many people looked up to. Um, Langston Hughes loved Harlem and lived around the corner from me in Harlem, and um, that was very important to me. I feel his spirit a lot as I walk through the streets of Harlem, and um, as I listen to music, you know, he is kind of like, called himself sometimes a blues poet and um, and so I just feel his um, I feel his spirit in the movie and that was very intentional I mean I wanted to pay homage to mm -hmm. to Langston Hughes and um, that's why I named the lead character yeah. Langston <laughs> for me I, I think it's amazing that someone could contribute on the level that he did when our country was going through some of the challenges that it was mm -hmm. and still find a poetry and still be artistic and still be relevant and uh, having written 33 books myself, I, I challenge myself to wonder, uh, 30 years from now, will any of them be relevant? <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? For somebody to, to write in such a way that, that we are still discussing them today, uh, says that they had enduring work, and that really is the measure of greatness, not, not just a, a temporary blip, but to have the significance that makes them still relevant today. Mm -hmm.